Hi, a quick uh, reference guide to networking in 4 uh, Quite a lot of customers struggle with the process. So I've got two computers here that I'm linked to via TeamViewer. Uh, POS1 as you can see and the other is POS2. Alright, so neither of them are shared. Uh, let's go through the process quickly. So again, go to Windows Explorer, right click on the C drive, go to option that says at, give access to advanced sharing. Uh, it's not shared, click on advanced sharing, share this folder, go to permissions, make sure everyone is there, allow everything, apply and OK. Apply OK one more time. Click on security, make sure there's everyone. If there isn't everyone, let me go and uh, edit that and remove everyone and do the process from scratch. So I'm going to add and type in the word everyone, make sure of the spelling, make sure you type it in correctly, make sure you allow all the options there, I click on apply, change permissions, yes, recycle bin, all of the others that uh, Windows can't share or doesn't want to share, or doesn't want to give you permission to share, continue on all of them. Do not cancel at any time. Once it's finished, go back and simply click OK. All right, so we've done the sharing and we've done general. Let's get back into the control panel again, still on pause one machine. Uh, we want to go to advanced network settings. So go to network and sharing center, uh, advanced sharing settings. Make sure that you've go through all the processes, all the steps, turn on turn on file and printer sharing, ensure that it's all done, turn on network, turn on file printer sharing. Um, again, not necessary to get the public folders. Uh, so we're just going to move down here and make sure that it says turn off password protected sharing. It's critical that you do that. In this case, it's all done correctly. Last thing to check on this computer. Uh, sorry, I want to go back to the control panel. Um, and in the control panel, we want to go and make sure that we do not have a password on any of the user accounts. So user account, I've got an account called 123 here, local administrator, no password. If there is a password, you will not be able to access it. Done. Do the same for your second computer or third or whatever number you have. Um, let's go in there, right click on C drive. So it's a repeat of the first step. You can watch or skip this part if you want to, but exactly the same. Make sure password protection is off. Again, on this computer, also check the user permissions. If it's Windows 7 or 8, also go make sure the guest account is on. All right, so no password on there. So now just to test it, go to Explorer. Uh, as I said, my first computer is called POS1. So backslash, backslash, POS1, backslash C. And we have access to uh, my server computer, no problem. If I go to pause one computer, uh, I can should be able to do the same to the other computer, backslash, backslash, pause two, backslash C, and I have full access there. Simple enough. So back on pause one, I've already created a company and I've already loaded my four pods on there properly, correctly. Uh, and I've even registered it and added a second terminal. So let's just go and test that everything is working now. See my controller is opening up and it's already showing pause 2 and my server correctly active and connected. Going into the back office just to show you what I've done in terms of the setting up of the second point of sale machine. And then we'll go on to the POS2 machine and just show you how the installation process there should be and what it should look like. Alright, I'm 
I'm just skipping all of this for now. All right, so store setup and security setup point of sale. And as you can see, I've got a second machine there, pass two, and the network address is also pass two. If for whatever reason I decide to make that pass 21 by mistake uh, or something, then obviously my domain controller will give me a problem. It's going to refresh now and uh, have a look at that machine and it will not be able to find a machine with POS21 or any other name. So again, might be a good idea to give your computer name something simple. Sometimes we log into systems and we have lots of problems. And as you can see, POS2 uh, is not there anymore because of I the fact that I changed the name. So again, old rule of computers, keep it simple. All right, let's change that quickly back to POS2. And within a couple of seconds, my domain controller will pick it up and as you can see, active and connected. All right, so that's the server part done. Let's go and have a look at POS2 now. All right, so for the moment, we're assuming that you have not installed 4POS on the second machine. If you have, and you said that that's also the server, in other words, that's also its own computer, then that was wrong and it would be better for you to uninstall the 4POS system on there. Hopefully you did not register it and mess up the licensing because now that second voucher would not be able to be used again on the first machine because obviously it's been used here. But be that as it may, let's go through. So typically what you will do on your second machine is specify all other 4POS installation. This applies to the second, third or 20th machine. We have customers that run up to 26 terminals. So um, all of the others, other than the server machine, everybody else will be installed like this. And you can just simply click on next and carry on with the whole process. Now that you've installed the 4POS system, we're going to go on the second computer. Uh, you'll see that the 4POS controller is there, but it's uh, grayed out. In other words, it doesn't have a 4POS icon, meaning that it's not there. You might as well delete it. So we're going to open up the 4POS back office program here. And the 4POS back office is now going to ask us where the database is, because obviously it's not going to find it on the local machine. All right, and typically what it will do is it will go and say select the path to application file and just let's keep it simple and let's go and say theoretically it will start there. So we're going to go to network and you'll find your machine on the network or alternatively because we know that it's what the machine name is. We can simply go and type in for POS1, C drive and browse through there. We know that it's on the 4POS server folder. The file is db.ini. You simply click on it, it will create a new ODBC connection, um, which is what we need to access the database. And now my back office program will open on the second computer. And that in a couple of minutes is as simple as it gets. If you complicate things by saying, no, I want to do it my way, good luck. We can't help you. And if you do want us to help you, it will cost you money. As you can see on the second terminal, back office then opens up and on the top, right hand side where the mouse is now it's showing me clearly that the database is sitting on pos1 the c drive the 4pos server folder and that's the process enjoy